AI presents an incredible challenge, not just in Japan, but to countries and policymakers around the world. Someone has pointed out that half of the jobs that exist today won't exist in a decade. And the jobs of 10 years from now, half of the jobs of 10 years from now don't exist today. And AI is, 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 is the key factor in this incredible economic and social transformation uh, which we're all experiencing today. Most, if not all, of the routine jobs that human beings are doing today, I think we can predict with some certainty, will eventually be replaced by, by machines. And so the question becomes, how do we ensure that people, individuals, have the skills and resiliency to move on in their lives? Not just to focus on the traditional you know, single career for 30 or 40 years, but to be adaptable and flexible enough to move on and, and not just improve their skills, but take on, take on new kinds of jobs. Um, but this is nothing new, really. Societies going back to the first Industrial Revolution have dealt with uh, tremendous displacement when new technologies come on the scene. And we've seen political manifestations of, of resentment uh, that occur at the same time. In the late 19th century in the United States, for example, and in Japan as well, we saw the first Industrial Revolution uh, displace uh, agricultural employment, and we saw the growth of, of big cities, and we saw political instability that happened at the same time. And we'll be seeing the same sort of thing going forward. But what's key, I think, uh, as someone who served in government previously and now works in the private sector, is for governments and uh, uh, private sector leaders as well to work together to ensure that the human impact of these disruptions are minimized, but that we're really investing resources as a society, particularly in education, so that we prepare people to deal with the inevitable change and that this change is far more positive to our societies and our happiness as individuals uh, than it is negative. I'm confident as a student of history that we can do this, but I'm also aware that it will require a lot of work, a lot of cooperation, and a lot of smart thinking on the part of both private sector and, and public leaders. Well, there's no question that 2019, or Heisei 31, is going to be a really exciting year and a really important year for Japan. Uh, the Heisei Emperor is abdicating after 31 years on the throne, uh, a time that has been a transitional time for Japan. Of course, the Showa period uh, encompassed uh, the lead up to World War II, uh, that tragic war, and then Japan's remarkable, in fact, miraculous growth and resurgence uh, in the years following World War II. What will happen after Heisei? Well, a lot of Japanese are, are wondering and thinking about that now as well. Of course, human beings like to assign significance to arbitrary changes in calendars. Um, in many countries, January 1st, uh, in other countries, the Lunar New Year is a time of renewal, of a new start. It symbolizes something, even though it's really just the turning of a calendar page. But I think these symbolic years and moments have real importance. And in Japan, historically, that's been the case as well. In the 19th century, the Meiji Restoration was the kickoff of, of Japan's rapid uh, industrial and political advance, uh, its opening to the world. 1923, the Great Tokyo Earthquake was also an inflection point in the development of this city, at least, uh, Tokyo, uh, and the way in which people regard um, the relationship between Japanese people and nature, which can sometimes be destructive. 1945, of course, um, was a pivotal moment in Japan's development. Uh, the end of a tragic war, but also the beginning of Japan's miraculous resurgence uh, to become a global economic, uh, political, and even societal superpower. 1964 was a particularly interesting year. Tokyo hosted the Summer Olympics, but it was really very much Japan's first emergence on the world stage following the Second World War. And for Japanese, that year really encapsulates a moment of great optimism, and promise uh, for their country. And some look back to that year with great, great nostalgia. Uh, 1989, of course, was the end of the Showa period, 
uh, when the emperor, who had been on the throne since 1925, uh, passed away, and the Heisei period began. Uh, closer to today, and more tragically, uh, 2011 was the year of the terrible triple disaster, the tsunami, uh, earthquake, and the nuclear incident in Tohoku uh, that still reverberates today. Um, uh, as, as the Tohoku region continues to try to rebuild uh, from that, that terrible, uh, terrible disaster. 2019 is going to be a very interesting moment for Japan. Looking forward a little, of course, uh, Japan in 2020 will host the Summer Olympics and Paralympics. And there's tremendous and building excitement here about that moment. And like 1964, what that might mean for Japan on the world stage when the eyes of the world are on Tokyo and on Japan for two weeks. First of all, how Japan can present itself uh, to the world with this wonderful opportunity for some national PR. But secondly, um, the technologies that Japan will use to, to implement the games uh, and the hospitality that I think the Japanese people will show to visitors from around the world and what this portends uh, for Japan's society in the future as it deals with uh, more and more uh, foreign workers and more and more foreigners coming to Japan uh, for various reasons. So the, the, the change or the, the transition uh, between emperors is really a very interesting moment for Japan. I think it's way too early to say what it might mean, but I think we will see um, a lot of Japanese thinking about how can we use this moment to really not just show the world what Japan is and what it's accomplished, but how we can use this moment to focus on what do we want to become? What kind of country to, is Japan? What kind of country do we want to be in the future? And what kind of role can we and should we play uh, on the global stage? So I'm really looking forward uh, to the next 18 months. Uh, it should be really interesting, and I think very significant as well.